Welcome to Real Relationship Goals, a podcast all about the realities of healthy relationships. Real Relationship Goals is a project of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual violence or harassment and is seeking support, services, or needs more information, links to resources and our hotline number can be found in the description. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of their organizations or affiliates. Welcome back, y'all, to Real Relationship Goals podcast. This is episode 13, and we are so excited you're here with us. I'm Blythe. I'm Mariana. I'm Kyla. I'm Allie. So I have our story for us today. I almost said this morning, but also like you might be listening to this at midnight. I don't know what you do. Um, and it is not like a story of mine, but a story I have heard and, and feel comfortable sharing um, that was uh, told from the perspective of a pastor. So there is a wife and husband, husband had been, or gentleman, we'll call him Carl. <laughs> I'm being like Carl from Up, like Carl and Ellie. Uh, okay. Oh, that would have been a great story too. Y'all yeah, recommend up. Um, anyways, uh, so anyways, gentlemen like had been sick for a long time, I think with cancer. Um, and like, you know, was either hospitalized or like kind of in hospice stage um, and, you know, and passed away. And, you know, it's often at like a pastor or like some, uh, someone from like a faith background to like go to the family to like love and support. Um, and this person had like two daughters, um, like they're grown and old. Um, and then like, you know, now wife and, and grieving widow, um, and so like person, you know, gets to the hospital or, or the hospice home or their home or whatnot. And, you know, like daughters are like, they're yeah, obviously like so upset and distraught and like in almost this age of like shock and, and sadness. And like, so is mom and like, you know, mom's kind of like head is in her hands and like kind of calls pastor, you know, near and just like, Hey, Hey, like, can you come here? Like, I want to talk to you for a second. And, and whispers in his ear, like, get me out of here. And he's like, Oh, Cool. Um, and she was like, okay, like, hey guys, like I'm gonna take your mom out into the hallway and we're gonna talk for a second. Um, you know, and, and he's you know describing like in his mind, like, what the heck is going on? Um, and you know, like once they get into the hallway, she like takes this big breath and is like, Oh, like I've had months and months and years to like grieve already, and now I feel just so much closer that like now that he's passed away, like my um, obviously like I'm I'm so sad, but like my grieving process is is like I'm actually in a great, really great place of like, you know he was suffering for so long and, and now he's not. And like, what a gift. Um, and so, uh, yeah, like her just not being kind of in the depths of despair and her grief, like looked very different of like, I'm so sad, but also like, so glad that like, although I miss him, like this stage is just of his life is over. Um, and, uh, versus like her daughters who I think were like from out of town or something like that. Um, and so like, we're very much in, in the depths of like, oh my gosh, like I'm like overcome by this and really, really, yeah. Oh, like overwhelmed um and so just, I, th- I think when I first heard that story I was like that is not where I thought that <laughs> that was gonna go um but like what a good example of like the grief in different stages like looks different um mm-hmm. and uh and yeah awesome. that's what I can yeah. great that's thanks why. so much for um as y'all <laughs> might have picked up um our topic for our episode today is grief in mourning and I think just initially it's just always good to set a reminder of if you are ever feeling overwhelmed or like you're not in the right place for this episode absolutely take a break come back Mm -hmm. to it whenever you want or if you ever feel ready or if this is one you just want to skip and you want to jump right into 14 absolutely feel free our feelings will not be hurt we just want you to do whatever is best for you Mm -hmm. Um, because today might be a little bit heavier and it's also going to look a little bit different We're going to focus a little bit less on the healthy and unhealthy aspects of grief and mourning, even though there are definitely unhealthy ways to grieve and to mourn. And if you ever find yourself being overwhelmed, um, we want to encourage you to reach out for help, reach out to others, uh, reach out to the ones you know are going through the grief and mourning process. Um, But today is going to look a little bit more like exploring what grief and mourning is, especially through the lens of being in relationship with others and uh, just what you can do to support others that are grieving as well. So just with that cover and that, we want to jump in just to kind of what grief and mourning look like, what they are. Are they different? Are they the same? Let's (laughs) find out. (laughs) Today on relationship. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think for a long time, I have solely associated grief 
with death of like grief is something you do after someone passes away which is absolutely true um but yeah just like in the last I don't know how many number of years um yeah I've also been thinking and learning of like grief is just a response to loss Mm -hmm. um which could look like a lot of different things we can get into examples later um but that it's yeah I think good to emphasize that like not just grief does not just exist within the realm of like we lose someone or like someone passes away um but it's just in a response to loss in general um I think is a good thing to emphasize that I often forget yeah and and, you know grief uh is can be like like you know Beth is talking about grief and mourning around death it can be like really major things like breakups mm-hmm. moving losing a job a divorce um you know ending a friendship um Ariana was talking about that a little bit in the last episode and um and it can also be like those are really major things and it can also be like um smaller things as well um and it can exist it, grief can be something that like is it being experienced basically by one person in a relationship mm-hmm. or it can be experienced by both people like within a relationship you know we talked about in I think oh man episode three maybe we talked about disappointment grief mm-hmm. it was r- pretty early on in the season and um there can be like some grief around mm-hmm. those around disappointments whether mm-hmm. you know kind of like big or major or minor however you would define that we're not defining what is a major and minor loss but it can be a um you know expectations not being met so we we were talking a little bit before this episode and and we were talking about how you know like if you're in high school and you're dating someone and your plan is to Mm -hmm. go to the same college um so you can be in the same place and then one person gets into that uh college and the other person doesn't then there is there's grief there of like Mm -hmm. having to mourn the loss of at least that idea of something like that Mm -hmm. and you can shift and you can do whatever you want or you cannot shift whatever but um the point is is there is loss there and so loss can be very big Mm -hmm. life altering um like this person i'm not in relationship with them anymore for uh, any type of reason Mm -hmm. and it can also be kind of like everyday um, loss that you're having to navigate in in your relationship and so anyway I just wanted to kind of say that as we um as we talk through this a little bit yeah I think you gave a good example of loss can is both like or can be both like I have something and then I lost it or like I was hoping for that mm-hmm. thing and I now cannot mm-hmm. at, like attain or achieve it and both things are lost even if you technically like, didn't like have something yeah. um <clears throat> yeah it's a good caveat mm-hmm. Is there a difference between grief and mourning? Are they different? Technically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people associate it to be the same, but um, grief is more of the internal um, feeling after a loss, and mourning is the outward response to having a loss or um, just like going through a different transition with people in relationships. Um, so that could look like, in many ways, would like being in high school with like like how we associate like grief with the thought of death Mm -hmm. but it can look differently like when that person is still alive sure basically so like when that person is still alive like say you're talking about a friendship um a real real close friendship in high school and um one person is moving to a different location but in the like beginning process maybe you guys both were planning on going to that same location Mm -hmm. and then things changed um that situation in that process and uh, now you're the transgression of grieving that process of that you're not going to be as close to this person anymore and so it's going to change the dynamics of your relationships maybe but just like yeah still looking at that as that is a grief in mourning type Mm -hmm. process as well Mm. um I think we hear a lot about uh the like stages of grief Mm. I think people I mean I think that that's kind of just like thrown around sort of just like uh sort of colloquially but um what what are the what are the stages who wants to talk about the stages of grief and do you go through them 
one after another or I nominate Kyla. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not really teeing it up for you. I'm going to um, say I have them written down, but I'm going to try to go through them in order, okay. even though, um, spoiler alert, grief is not a linear experience and it will look different and unique for every single person that experiences it. And there's also not a correct way mm -hmm. to grieve or to mourn something um, because every relationship is different and every experience is different and you're going to respond to things differently. Um, but, oh, not so looking. Okay. So the five <laughs> stages um, in the traditional order that people say that are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. You got it. Mm. It's because I had a trauma loss in morning class a year ago. Okay. We talked about it a lot. But, um, but yeah, kind of like I mentioned earlier, grief is never a linear experience. You don't have to do those things in that order. I think that's just kind of how people, it's depicted a lot in media, just because it's from the Kubler-Ross model. Um, I think Kubler-Ross, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and, Killing since it. The, <laughs> and since that was kind of like published, I think that the media has, I'm very glad they're exploring what grief and loss mm -hmm. is. I feel like one of the most recent like user that we got uh, was in WandaVision, uh, where there was a really popular quote that came out of that, where it was like, grief is just love persevering. Mm -hmm. um, like it's just evolved into a different form, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is extremely meaningful. But outside of that, media has picked up the kind of this model and tries to depict grief kind of in this stage. I think a lot of TV, shoot, TV shows, TV shows <laughs> um we'll do episodes surrounding grief and we'll run through this model in that order so mm -hmm. it makes people think oh I have to grieve this way or um culturally grief can look mm -hmm. so different depending on what cultural norms are mm -hmm. um and media and just kind of social pressures force us to think oh if I'm not crying if I'm not physically mm -hmm. like upset then I'm not doing it right mm -hmm. and that's just not true there's not a wrong way Agree. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me think of, um, oh, Allie, will you go up here really quick and hit no? <laughs> it's the pop up. Oh, it's fast. Yeah, really. pop -up. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I, Kyla, going off of what you're saying, there's, um, uh, I've seen this from uh, Rachel Cargill, who's an author, um, activist. She owns a bookstore in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I don't know. I don't know if this is set as a poem. So if it's like a Twitter poem, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, a twoem. Uh, <laughs> but she writes, oh, no. <laughs> grief is an irritability. Grief is an anger. Grief is an dissociation. Grief is in stomach pain. Grief is in detachment. Grief is in fatigue. Grief is an I'm not the same person that I was before she died. Mm -hmm. She's speaking of her mom. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just like that, depending on like, yeah, your personality, your relationship with that person, your cultural context like grief is going to look very different and if grief doesn't look like sobbing on the floor of your bathroom like that doesn't mean that you're not grieving if you are sobbing on the floor of your bathroom like that is very valid and like still grief but um yeah it can look like things like being irritable or just being like like physically tired um or like your body feeling just heavy um or like a ton yeah a ton of other things too yeah so, so yeah, for, for ourselves and for the people we're in relationship with, mm -hmm. like grief is, um, it can be messy and it can be easy to like try and avoid those feelings. Um, but it is, um, important that like we take that process, like mm -hmm. that Kyla, Kyla was talking about. And so like, we can be doing that while in relationship and we're like, we're experiencing grief, like with the person in relationship with, we're both grieving something or mourning the loss of something. And, but also we can find ourselves in situations where like the person we're in relationship with has experienced a loss that like mostly only impacts us because it mm. impacts them. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so using kind of like all of the things that we talked about or everything we talked about up until mm -hmm. now, like, so how do you how do you navigate that when the person you're in a relationship with has experienced is experiencing grief mm. um whether that is kind of like what we're talking about is like a major loss or kind of uh I don't want to call it things like major and minor losses but there are like things that like you know we were talking about at the beginning like kind of like the disappointment type things and then there is like 
fully a loss of, of something like something no longer exists, which mm. feels a little bit more major to me, but, but I think that's all relative and, and each person sure. can decide what feels made like major and minor loss to them. Um, loss is still loss. So mm. anyway, I'm really <laughs> rambling now. How do we, how do we navigate that? How, how do we navigate loss um, and grief with, with someone we're in a relationship with? Have all of you seen Inside Out? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love Inside Out. So There's, uh, this makes me think of the scene, speaking of like the range of, of losses, maybe if, like range is better than like major or minor. Yeah, that's good. That's um, good. Where, so, <laughs> sad, um, so sadness and joy are like, they're outside of the little bubble thing and they're with the imaginary friend who's named Bobo, uh, Buddy. Uh, bing, bing Bong. Bing Bong. Bing Bong. <laughs> bing bong. Um, and, uh, and Bing Bong, and there's a, a point in Inside Out where Bing Bong is really reckoning with the fact that like, he's basically actively being forgotten um, or not, or so forgotten sad. or like, yeah, and it, and it's so oh. sad. And, and that he has this like little red wagon that can like fly into all those things. And it like goes over this cliff of like, this is now like the forgotten land or something like that. And he just like kind of for a second, like is overcome by like, oh, the wagon just went over. Like that is so part of who I am. And like, I was Riley's friend and she's like forgetting about me. And uh, the thing that Joy wants to do is just like, oh no, that's so sad. But you know what? Like, it's going to be okay. Like, we're just going to keep moving. Like, that's, there's candy over here. Um, <clears throat> also, right, I know like Joy's on a mission to get back to headquarters and whatnot. Um, but like sadness or what sadness does is just like sit with Bing Bong um, and listen. And at least she really doesn't say much, but like mostly just like sit and listen um, and be like, yeah, like that is hard um and so I think part of grief or like sitting like being with someone in grief is not trying to like move someone like through grief but just like sometimes literally like sitting with them in it or um or and like I know for me like this can be uncomfortable because I love to talk (laughs) um but like on a phone call just like being willing to like sit in silence even on a phone call um uh and yeah, the, like, I, I'm not disengaging from you or I'm not going to like, Ooh, I'll wait till you're quote unquote like better. Um, before kind of like I re-engage, but like, I'm willing to like be with you and sit with you, like even in like silence and, and sadness, um, mm-hmm. and, and still show up continually, obviously giving people space and they need space, but, um, is I think a big one. It makes me think of the, um, Brene Brown video about empathy mm-hmm. that I love so much. Oh, it's yeah. animated on YouTube yes. and it's, <clears throat> perfect um and as a part of it um it shows there's lamb i think or a sheep is down in this pit of just having a hard time experiencing hard things and uh, the bear climbs down the ladder into the pit and like one of the big phrases is um i've been here too Mm -hmm. and i'm here with you now Mm -hmm. and it's like you were saying like just Mm -hmm. being there And one of the most powerful things I think that I've learned just in responding to people is just, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. And a very genuine, it sounds silly, but a very genuine, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all you have to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like you were saying, just being present and being there with somebody can be so much Mm -hmm. and so much more meaningful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times we're tempted to dive into fixing it and solving the problem yeah. or silver lining the problem mm-hmm. which is kind of another form of fixing it or we want to kind of we're uncomfortable with grief and we're uncomfortable with mourning I think mm-hmm. just kind of naturally and inherently yeah. so we want to either <clears throat> paper over those things make them less or sometimes just stop interacting with people until they're more comfortable mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. it's like oh okay I'm gonna leave you over there and I'll come back when you're fun again. And that's mm-hmm. just not, mm-hmm. that's not how grief works. That's not how friendship works either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think that kind of goes right into our relationship goal for this week. We feel ready for that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so your relationship goal is to, after listening to this episode, talk to someone or tell someone about a place or a thing or someone that you miss and have had to, or are continuing to kind of grieve the loss of, um, and this could be like a move or a death loss or a shift in relationship. Um, and so practice that, um, processing and grieving 
and then receiving um, and listening of whoever you're you're talking about this with of their own um, kind of stories about that as well. And Ariana has a recommendation for the week. Yes, yes, I do. Um, my recommendation is the book The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Um, also, it is a movie. It is a I think it has three movies. Mm -hmm. So if you like the mm -hmm fantasy novels and just the fantasy it is set in Narnia and it's like the home for a mystical beast and talking animals and warring kingdoms so it's a great book for a family to read and also like a great movie for a family to watch and also like talking animals that's cool to me I don't know how I would react if a talking animal came up to me but I, I feel like that is really cool so yes that is my recommendation I love it so good yeah <laughs> that makes me think of the one time I saw a beaver in like a, a picture of a beaver in like a cardigan or something like that it was incredible oh I'm like I'm oh. very it's hard to be <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say uh y'all thank you for sitting with us um in this episode we hope it's both in encouragement and validation uh to you and your grieving and mourning um and also in encouragement that if the only thing that you can do with someone is just sit with them that that is enough um, and that that is valid um yeah, we'll see you next week for episode 14. In the meantime, rate us, review, subscribe, you know what to do. Um, and we'll see you then. Thanks so much for tuning in to Real Relationship Goals. This episode was produced by the Prevention and Education Department of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. You can follow us on Instagram at ACCVC underscore prevention. See you next time.